Welcome to the Swan Street Gallery, where we will learn more about works by Robert Kuhn from my friend, Marcy Logan. Hello, History Hatters. Just a few houses down from the studio of John Kavanagh, the sculptor of DuPont, who was previously featured in this season of the History Hat, the collection of another late artist, Robert Kuhn, resides in the Swan Street Gallery. The gallery's owner happens to be a friend of mine and a History Hat contributor, Marcy Logan. Marcy has graciously offered to give us a private tour of the collection. So let's go to the gallery and step inside. So he did funny little drawings like this here. Robert Kuhn hardly ever did anything twice. This is a collage. It's called the uh, River of Flowers. Yeah, this is a nice piece. This is Adam and Eve. You see, uh, he hardly ever repeats his style. This doesn't have a name, but I think it might be the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. I call it the, the baby apocalypse. <laughs> but I think he's wonderful. Marcy explained that the large wall sculpture named The Mill was featured in the DuPont Circle Citizens Association house tour brochure. This is Jonah and the Whale. This is Icarus, the horse that flew too close to the sun. And this one here is Bobby on the unicycle. And Bobby in the unicycle is also reflected in this oil painting. And this one here is called Peru. And here is called Bob and John. Bob and John are one and the same person. He used to call himself John when he was silly, and he also wrote a lot of silly stories, and he signed them, uh, John Sonoma. It's just an alter ego. So this is, this is Bob cutting his hair, and this is John. This is a self-portrait of Bob, which I think is excellent. Robert Kuhn was uh, born in 1918 or 1917. We're not quite sure in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And he went to uh, Catholic schools, but the nuns recognized his artistic abilities, so they had him transferred to a public school so he could have access to shop and all the woodworking machines because he was working in wood in those days. This is called Suffragettes. And it's a very, very nice piece. This is one of his early wooden pieces. He went to the Art Institute in Chicago, uh, and that was during the WPA days. His uh, children say that he was uh, a, a WPA recipient, uh, but I haven't been able to document that, unfortunately. This is just another abstract that looks very nice. These two here are dated 1938 and 1939. These may well be WPA pieces. He uh, went to Mexico during that period, came back to Michigan, and married, and had a family immediately, and decided to take his family down to Mexico. He learned how to weld in Mexico, and um, he started welding these things that you see right behind me, and they started selling immediately um, in the local galleries. And then he soon became affiliated with the Rosenthal Gallery in New York, and also a gallery uh, on the West Coast. Uh, he became very popular with the members of the Kennedy administration and the local art scene. He had a lot of celebrity clients. Uh, one was Harry Belafonte. Another one was um, Zelda Ficklander, who originated the arena stage. I really like the uh, sculptures that um, show uh, movement. As an example of the movement she admires, Marcy showed us this piece. The trapeze artist. Uh, and this one here is Boy on Stilts which along with Bobby and the Unicycle is probably one of the best, best ones, I think. What I like about his artwork is that it's all very upbeat and a lot of the artwork represents domestic scenes, women and children. What this is called a woman with girdle. I put them side by side because they're, I just think they make a nice pair. They're kind of playful. It's called a Boy Mountain Pony. Marcy directed our attention to a fun sculpture named The Gentleman's Shoe. Because it's a beautiful piece and I love it. It's just fantastic. Maybe 1966, he became dismayed with the size of the commissions that he had to pay to the galleries. So he left uh, Washington. He bought a church uh, near Blue Ray, Virginia, uh, and he renovated that. 
and that's where he spent the last 30, 35 years of his life. Marcy revealed that Robert Kuhn's children painted a wall of tribute to their father at the Swan Street Gallery. The mural first shows Robert Kuhn in his unheated apartment at the Art Institute of Chicago. And here he is. He was apparently influenced by Walt Whitman, so he's giving thought about Walt Whitman. And here he is with his wife and four children. And here he is, you see, he's welding uh, Bobby on the unicycle here. Lastly, be sure to check out the opportunity to stay in one of the apartments in Marcy's building, where some of Robert Kuhn's works are also on display. Subscribe by clicking on the History Hat logo as we continue to explore the mysteries of history.